This is AEDT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. This week, we will discuss digital communication technologies and liberal professions. And the topic for this video clip is Managing your profession through communication technologies. The analysis questions for this video clip are How do recruiters and talent hunters use digital communication technologies to find and recruit talents? Which site do they use? How does using these technologies assist their search? How important is it that students and future job seekers promote their skills online? What are the profiles that stand out from the crowd? How can students become more visible to online recruiters and talent hunters? To give you more idea about how to manage your profession through communication technologies, I ask these questions to the strategic sourcing recruitment lead at CGI Tony Giacobi. Our guest, Tony Giacobi, is an accomplished recruitment sourcing professional with a wide breadth of experience in the implementation of strategic sourcing methodologies and tools. He is an experienced recruiter, utilizing effective, leading-edge technologies to source, recruit, and hire Tier 1 professionals throughout North America. Tony has a proven track record of listening and understanding business needs, partnering with senior leadership on workforce planning, strategic recruitment initiatives, execution, and delivery. The first question I asked our guest was, can you talk about your experience in using digital communication technologies to find and recruit talent? Which sites have you been using, and how did the use of these technologies assist your search? I mean, the world, as you know, in recruiting is very competitive, so using leading-edge technologies to find talent in the technology sector is critical. Um, the days of advertising and posting are not even remotely as effective as they were, say, five, seven, you know, years ago. Um, they, typically, you've got to go out and utilize technology to find people. Um, they're fairly not always easy to find, but if you've got the right tools in place and the right sources, you can find them. And the whole point about all that is utilizing these technologies to make contact, to find people and speak to them real time, because nothing can replace a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So these tools basically are tools to find and source people. Um, some of the tools that are very prevalent in today's market, um, one of my absolute favorites is LinkedIn. Um, it has connected millions upon millions of people throughout various countries um, in technology. Um, LinkedIn Recruiter is a specific tool that enables people in sourcing and recruiting to connect with other people um, on a very one-on-one -on -one basis um, and to actually search other specific talents within both organizations, cities, countries, um, and even very, very niche specific technological capabilities. Other sources are things like um, Indeed.com, The Ladders, you know, Bullhorn, uh, RecruitIn.net. Um, there's a multitude of other sites that utilize similar um, technologies or algorithms to find individuals in specific sectors. Other sources that are wonderful are things like user groups on LinkedIn. The second question I asked our guest was, according to you, how important is it to students and future job seekers to promote their skills online? Having a LinkedIn profile is extremely important. LinkedIn grows by one million people a day. New subscribers a day worldwide. That's incredible. Yeah. The reach they have outweighs any other product or any other service in the world currently. And what people don't realize is, and I do this myself, if, I'm, if I have an interview with someone who's coming in, the first thing I'll do is I'll look up their LinkedIn profile to get a better understanding of their background, who they are, you know, what they've done. Um, if I see a very bare LinkedIn profile, I question why. That's the first thing in my head. The other thing about LinkedIn, even as a student, is who your connections are. Try to aspire to connect with people that will help you get to know other people within your career. People need to understand that LinkedIn is not Facebook. You're not there to make friends. You're not going to use LinkedIn to post pictures. Exactly. You're using LinkedIn as a professional connection service to meet other individuals and connect with them from a business perspective mm -hmm. only. And I need to stress that clearly. It's a business connection only. Mm -hmm. um, and people will look at you as a business connection only. 
Um, so when you do connect, try to connect with people, again, that are like-minded individuals such as yourself and people that can help you connect to other individuals. Because once you connect with them, you have visibility to all of their connections. Exactly. And this is how you grow your network. Sharing um, news articles and topics of interest on through their network, that's fine. I encourage that. I do it probably 15, 20 times a day, be it job openings within CGI yeah. or recent news releases from CGI or articles that I feel are of interest um, and add value. Make sure that every time you share something, it's going to add value. The last questions I asked Tony were, based on your experience, what are the profiles that stand out from the crowd? And what tips can you give our students to help them become more visible to recruiters and talent hunters? Since we're speaking about students, yeah. in this case, um, oh, I, I see resumes all the time where people will, will have a, there will be a student with a two-page resume and they'll list um, accomplishments in a part-time job where they were um, a busboy or a waitress mm -hmm. or um, a collection person at, um, at, a, at a ticket stand and they'll spend you know a quarter of a page outlining the, the duties that they've done there and that's great but they completely disregard they've got a bachelor of science in computer a bachelor of computer science degree and that's all it'll say from from University of Toronto, Concordia, Waterloo, whichever. Mm -hmm. Rarely will they elaborate on what they've majored in, what their their GPA has been, um, what their interests are, what they've focused in on Java or .NET technologies. Um, rarely do I see that. So I can see you've got a degree. I can see you've spent a page of your resume outlining your part time jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hire you for a cook. I'm not going to hire you for a waitress. If I'm looking at hiring you for an IT professional, elaborate and make it relevant yeah, to, okay. what, to what you're looking for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of students when they graduate, they use their resume they've been using for part-time jobs and just throw in their de completed degree on it. True. I'd expect that to get them to the next level. It's, it doesn't work that way. It's very important at the top of their resume or it's a, a, as a career objective um, what they want to do. Some folks have, you know, excelled in in GUI development, graphical user face development, and they want to be front end developers. Well, if that's what they aspire to be, and that's what they've really focused on when they got their degree, you've got to let somebody know that. I may not know that just from, or well, I would not know that just from mm -hmm. seeing that you've got a bachelor of science degree or a master's mm -hmm. in computer science. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, or some people just love working with databases. Unless I know that, and you've outlined that for me in your career aspirations and goals, I'm not going to know that. I go to a lot of university career fairs for CGI, and one of the most important things that I speak to students about is getting a profile on LinkedIn. And that doesn't mean just your name and the university you've graduated from. As an employer, when we assess recent graduates, the first thing I'll do is look on LinkedIn. And I understand as a recent graduate or a student, you don't have a lot of accomplishments career-wise to speak of. But what people overlook are their accomplishments they do in life. So belonging to um, associations in the university, you know, being leaders of groups in universities, um, part-time jobs that they've had that have showed leadership qualities and abilities, that have showed entrepreneurial spirit. These are the kinds of things that differentiate one student from another. The, cre the creative side, um, putting things down that, such as hobbies, and by hobbies I don't mean, um, you know, going out yeah. to a nightclub and keeping yeah. up on the most recent music as opposed to spending, you know, three hours a, a week or five hours a week on, you know, researching new technologies, things that will better enable them as individuals to grow their, themselves both personally and from a career perspective. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tony, thank you very much. You're very welcome. The synthesis questions for this video clip are what purpose do professional networking sites serve? How should you proceed to get connected on professional networking sites? And are there any experiences in using professional networking sites you would like to share?